Hello! The other day my friends told me that their parents had given them a big bunch of vinyl records that they were basically just chucking out and whilst there were some that were really good in there and that they're going to sell there was also a bunch of really weird shit. So I thought why not have a look and see if I can find any oddities to sample and you know throw a drum beat on or whatever and do something interesting with. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at the stack of ones that I found that looked like they might be, you know, a bit curious and then try find some sample worthy material and then stick it into the SP202 and do something with it. Fair warning, I haven't actually listened to any of these so I don't know what they're going to be like and this will probably span more than a couple of videos because there's so many vinyl there that I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I can do things with. So I'll show you what we've got. Alright, so here's the big pile of vinyl, you can see there's quite a few of them to go through. I'm not going to go through them all the now. Here's my dog deciding who wants involved in the action. Doesn't like the camera. Anyway, first one, landscape. From the tea rooms of Mars to the hell holes of Uranus. Mm, interesting. Al Stewart, Year of the Cat. No, no, Nanette, Naughty Marietta. Handle the water music. Interesting. Some Motown gold. Look at this. Rai Kudar Borderline. What is that? A bargain at 2 99 as well. Very odd. Uh, I'm not going to even attempt to say that name because I can't read it with the font. Oh, I like the back. Look at that. The Tubes. Remote control. Oh. Zorba the Greek. A favourite of mine. <laughs> This has got to be one of the best of them all. The Soviet Army Ensemble? I mean, I don't... Why did their parents have this? Berlioz Symphony Fantastic. I love the artwork in this. This is like some synthwave shit, but for opera, maybe? The Mikado. Uh, I have no idea what this is. It says something on the back about... Basically, this is a celebration of stereo sound. This I have listened to. This is a weird satirical uh, album of weird kind of piano style songs and uh, yeah, yeah this is another one actually I listened to and the less said about this the better it is not music but some kind of weird spoken word thingy Eddie Grant the Eurythmics I want to pick one of the weirder ones to take something from I think it should be Landscape from the Tea Rooms of Mars has to be. So I'm going to try these three first and see if there's any good on them. Okay, I have what is basically the most convoluted setup in the world here because I um, want to play this, I want you to hear it out a speaker, but I also want you to hear me. And I need to sample it as well, so I've got about a thousand different connections. So who knows if it'll work, but I've got the vinyl thing connected up to my preamp and then it's coming out. So who knows? So this is um, the first one, which was, what the fuck was it? Oh yeah, it was this landscape. What you can see is how dirty this is. So I'm sure my needle will need a wee clean after this. Yeah, fuck it. Oh my God, listen to that. Listen to that crack. Oh, that is nice. Right, I know I've just immediately done this, but I'm definitely going to take that, to be honest. The only thing, I can't really see where the tracks start on this very well. So I've got my fucking sample here. Uh, I'm going to hit play, and then in theory, I can't actually remember how to do this, it's been a couple of days, I guess. Is there anything in there? I guess I should clear them all, eh? Oh, I should have done that first, oh! Come on! Well, I don't have headphones in this, so I can't even tell. Maybe, oh, uh, I'm going to have to clear that, so you're not going to hear that. Oh, fuck. Okay, we're in business. I've cleared the samples off of this, so there's no samples. I've also turned the record volume up quite a lot. Oh, Jesus, I don't know what that was. All this pretend it never happened. Here we go, let's try it. Oh, 
<laughs> it didn't work. Record. Now it should work. It's so quiet though. So I don't know. Can barely hear it. Oh, it's so quiet. Why is it so quiet? Maybe if I plug my headphones direct then it'll be better. Let's see. Ugh. Fine. Ugh, fucking. I'm gonna have to figure out how I can get a better line level for this, because it's not loud enough. I don't understand though, because it's coming straight out of the preamp. Into the... this. So it should work. <sighs> Why does nothing... Why? Okay, I had a real nightmare setting this up because I was trying to record everything coming out so that you could hear it in the video at the same time but then it was too quiet and all the rest of it so I've changed things about but basically the vinyl player is going into a preamp which is then going into this thing the SP202 and then I've got my mic set up separately and blah -dee blah the output level of, from the vinyl is still really low and I don't really know how to fix that just now without taking it all apart, so I'm, I'm not going to bother. Anyway, I've cleared all the banks of this device. I have set the threshold so that it should uh, automatically start recording when I hit play or when the volume goes above a certain threshold. The very first opener sounds really cool, so I'm going to steal that. I mean, uh, sample that. You're going to have to just accept the noise on this thing because it is really noisy. <laughs> Although what I've realised is that's too hi-fi and I'm going to run out of space pretty quickly if I do that, so I'm going to have to go back. This is one annoying thing about this machine. Every time you record, you have to set the um, quality of the sample, but you can't do it before you hit record, so you have to do it every single time. Because this is belt drive, it takes a wee minute to spin up, so I'm always going to get that uh, noise at the start. I think with a different kind of drive turntable I wouldn't get that, but yeah, whatever. Lupe! Oh, that sounds cool as a loop. Ah, oh, finally. Anyway, I've spent a bit of time chopping these samples up, and so now I have some nice loops which sound like this. Not bad. Crackly as shit. Not bad. Oh, and I've pitched them down actually, if we listen to this. Might add a wee bit of delay. Because that sounds pretty good. We filter. Aye, so the pitch down a wee bit and the delay make it sound way better. So if we listen without. Fine. Pitch down. And then the delay. Gives it a big kind of stereo thing. It's not, it's almost like a, a BBD or something. It's more like a reverb in the way it works. Mm. 
what I think I'm going to do now is I have to get some drums and stuff, so I'm going to maybe record the DR202 and make my own drums, because that'll be better than sampling them, I think, because I'm shite at sampling drums. So that's my plan. That's what I'm going to do next. Drum time! I've brought the SP202 through into my studio where my DR202 is set up. I've roughly set the BPM to the correct speed of the sample, though obviously this is an auto-detected BPM of the sample and it's not exact, so I've tried to figure it out. It's kind of there or thereabouts. It's 83 in this and 84.2 on that. But what I'm going to do is write out a quick pattern or a few patterns on this and then I'm going to sample them into the SP202 here and use one of these pads and then that way I can get a wee bit more control over things. The problem with the 202 or one of the limitations shall we say is that you can't control uh, the individual volume of each sample after you've recorded it in so you really need to get it right the first time. So I'm going to do a pattern, I've just selected a, a kind of generic hip hop kit on this as it's called and I'm going to uh, tap something out and then um, sample in so let's fucking Okay, let's see how this works and if it's in time with the fucking That's surprisingly alright. What I can do now is add another wee trills and stuff. Sounds alright to me. Alright, so that isn't perfect, but uh, it'll do for now, so uh, let's try record that, shall we? Sounds alright. Okay, so hopefully if I loop that, it should be alright. Okay, let's... Gonna be a bit fast into it, so I wonder if I can retime it. So it seems like there's uh, a limit to the effects that are on it, which uh, okay. So I've got my pattern, my second pattern. So I'm gonna hit record. I've got my space in there. I'm gonna make it lo-fi as well and then I'm going to hit record okay then I need to trim that and then let's try loaf it okay so here's my very bad attempt at performing this and we'll see how it goes, I have to move my mic.
All right, so I think it's probably best that I leave that song where it is just now. To be honest, I've not sampled vinyl directly into this P202 before now, and there was a whole bunch of things that I realized as I went along that I should have done differently. And the kind of culmination of all those small things meant that in the end, I would have really have had to go back and re-record bits and redo whole parts of the process in order to get it to sound much better than it did. I mean, the exception being that I could have maybe learned to play things a bit better, but that aside. So what did I actually learn? Well, first of all, if I'm going to keep sampling vinyl, especially kind of crusty old vinyl, then I'm probably going to have to get a dedicated turntable, or at least it would be pre you know prudent to get a different turntable. The one that I've been using today is hooked up to my stereo system in the living room and it's what I listen to the records that I actually like on and it's probably not the best idea to be using my nice needle and my nice setup with old vinyl that I've kind of found in rubbish bins or you know that have been passed down after they've been stored in warehouses or you know sheds or something like that because it's it's not a good mixture to have. The other thing was what I mentioned earlier, the turntable I've got at the moment is a belt driven turntable which means there are some benefits for sound quality but when it spins up it takes a bit longer and it's not really necessarily designed to be jostled about and it makes it a wee bit harder to sample from. What I'll probably do is take a look on eBay and see if I can find a really cheap direct drive turntable because it doesn't need to be all that great since I'm just going to be you know, messing about with old records anyway, so the pitching and everything can be off and it won't make a big difference. The other things I kind of learned as I went along was that I'd seen online that lots of people were saying, oh, you shouldn't use the SP202 on lo-fi setting for drums because they, it doesn't sound good. And I didn't think that was the case because crunchy drums do sound great. But what I discovered was that you can't really run everything through the lowest bit rate or one of the lowest rates that they've got because if you do that, it all just kind of turns into mush and you don't really get any clarity of you know any of the elements. So to save space, you still need to use the lower quality rates, but you need to be quite careful about how you pick those elements. So if you've got a really lo-fi fuzzy melody, then it probably makes sense to have a higher quality drum beat to cut through that and you know give that sound the nice balance as opposed to just a wash of fuzz. The other thing that I ran into was that I was trying to sample uh, rhythmical elements and then stretch them a wee bit because the rhythmical part of the melody wasn't necessarily always on time with the BPM, if that makes sense, or at least some of the chops ended up slightly off. And the problem with the SP202 is that you can't pitch shift individual elements down, you can only do it globally, and you also if you add a time stretch onto things, individual elements that is, then you can't really play them in the same way because it kind of maxes out the memory. It's quite difficult to explain, but basically if you have a time stretch and a pitch on, or you know a, a pitch and a delay, you can't also have a time stretch. And then if you try and trigger two samples at once, it doesn't quite work. So you run into memory limitations with it. And that's fine because that's what the SP202 is, but it's something I have to bear in mind. In the past, when I've sampled in at the SP202, what I've actually done is take uh, melodic kind of chords or whatever, or just notes, and then played them over drum beats, which I could then control the tempo of by triggering the pads. If you've got two different elements that are rhythmical, much harder to deal with than that, and you could probably tell I had some trouble there in the playback. The other and maybe final thing that I learned when I was doing this was that when you're chopping up your samples, you really have to pay attention to the chops that you make, and it's quite different to if you were chopping loops up on your DAW or something like that, because you can't just you know trigger halfway through. You need to set up a point to do that. For example, let's say you have an 8-bar melody or you've got two 8-bar melodies. If you set them all to start at the beginning of the 8-bar or the separate 8-bars, then you can't really jump from one to the other because it, it doesn't sound right. You kind of need to have you know, one sample that starts at beat one and then another one that starts at beat four or maybe at beat two so that you can jump between them and you can play the full loop 
with the different trigger points, if that makes sense. The mistake I made was having them all as eight bar loops. So I would click one and the only time I could really change it was to go back to the start of another eight bar loop. Anyway, the point is you need to think about the way you chop up your loops a bit differently from other samplers that I've used before. So something that I'll be aware of next time. With that, eh, I'm gonna give up for now. Eh, I still have a bunch of vinyls that I want to work through and the plan is to get better at this as I go along and try and you know improve the way I chop up vinyl and see what I can do with it over time. Hopefully by you know uploading and showing the kind of journey of people learning to do things or at least me learning to do things then it might inspire somebody else or it might at least help somebody else who is going through kind of figuring things out to see that they're not idiots or at least if they are then lots of other people are idiots as well because when I look at videos online, often what you see is just the end result and you're like, oh man, that looks so easy. Like, why, you know, this is ridiculous. But actually there's quite a lot of skill involved and you don't see all the wee in-between bits where people can't even find the right cable or things aren't plugged in correctly or the volume's wrong or all the rest of it. And that happens to me constantly. On that note, I should also say that everybody that posts these lo-fi beat videos and the jams with the SP202 online clearly has a lot of skill and they, that has to be respected. So, respect.